I wanted to talk about um, some work in progress that I I hope we will be finishing up very soon um, with uh, Thomas Kreitzig, uh, Nick Garner, and Nathan Gear. Um, it started out a few years ago as, as part of an NSF FRG collaboration. Um, and it's related, but probably not in a way that will be obvious um, to some previous work um, with some of these co-authors and Jennifer Brown, uh, a grad student, and Stavros Garfalidis about recursion relations for so-called ADO invariants. Um, it's also closely related to um, a paper that appeared last year um, by Gukovsin, Nakajima, Park, Pei, and Sopenko um, that gives, in a, in a way I will say a little bit more about later, um, sort of a 3D mirror of, of our construction. Um, and, and there's also um, ongoing work in that direction by, by Gukov, Fagan, and, and Resha Tegan. Um, so to, to sort of set up the story, I, I want to discuss, um, there was sort of fa fantastic progress um, in, in math and in physics that, that started about 30 years ago um, in, well, in a bunch of papers, but in particular in work of, of Witten's um, and uh, of Reshtikin and Turayev um, that sort of connected um, some ideas coming from representation theory of quantum groups um, and vertex algebras, WCW models, and Turn Simon's quantum field theory. Um, one of one of the first examples of uh, so-called topological quantum field theories whose partition functions give you topological invariants, uh, in this case of, of three manifolds with links inside. Um, so um, I'm, I'm hoping that many of you have know at least part of this, part of this picture. Um, one of the huge, exciting, powerful aspects of this is, is that there were like, there were at least three different perspectives on, on quantum invariance that, that appeared. And, and one uh, could yeah. sort of study each side and, and connect them. Um, a, a key object, sorry, there's, there's a lot of feedback coming through. Let, let me know if, it, let, me, let me know if, if the audio is not okay for me at some point. Um, okay, so a key object um, in each of these constructions that appears uh, is, is a certain braided tensor category. And in the axiomatics of TQFT on the math side, one can sort of reproduce the entire um, TQFT from this braided tensor category. Um, in Turn Simon's theory, um, in, in, on the physics side, this is the so called category of line operators. Its, its objects are um, extended operators that uh, are localized on some sort of lines or curves in, in three dimensional space time. In VOA land, um, the objects of this category are modules for the relevant VOA, which, which is WCW. Um, and in terms of quantum groups, um, objects of this category are modules um, for a quantum group UQ of G um, at a root of unity um, that, well, <laughs> they're objects of this category, more precisely, they're objects of a massive semi-simplification of, uh, of this category. So, so the category at, at a root of unity, which is really what I wanted to talk about, during most of this talk is, is extremely complicated and, and it's not semi-simple and it was known a long time ago that it wasn't semi-simple. Um, and sort of a, a tiny piece of it um, goes into this original Reshtik and Turayev construction. Um, right, so, um, so like I mentioned, so, so in, in this old classic story, the category involved is semi-simple. 
Um, in terms of physics, um, semi-simple means there are no non-trivial junctions of, of line operators. Um, and in math, I'm hoping you all know what, what semi-simple means. So, um, so mathematically, you would say there, there are no non-trivial morphisms um, um, among, okay. among objects, and, and morphisms are junctions on, on the physics side. OK. So a lot of progress has been made since then, um, sort of extending into the non-semi-simple world. Um, on the quantum group side, even in the early 90s, um, Libashenko and others uh, started writing down like partial TQFTs um, that, that started off with a non-semi-simple category. Um, and the Kutsudeguchi Otsuki or ADO invariants of, uh, of links are, are sort of related to this. They're, they're related to a semi-simple part of a bigger category that I'll mention later on. Uh, the, the, well, the, the problem there is not that it's not semi-simple. The problem is that there some representations have vanishing quantum dimensions that need to be regularized. Um, anyway, so, so all sorts of problems come up in general uh, when looking at the big category of UQ of G modules at a root of unity um, that need to be dealt with somehow. Um, a systematic set of tools for dealing with the various problems that come up um, has been constructed much more recently, starting in work, in work of Gir Constantino and Patiro Miro um, and extending in a bunch of different ways since then. Um, and, and so now there is, um, well, there, there, there's still extensions that are being developed, but, but uh, there is at least one TQFT um, defined using these techniques, these new techniques that involves the, the full representation category of, of UQ of G. Um, I'll talk about this category in, in about 10 minutes. Um, so on the VOA side, there have been similar developments. Um, so going non-semi-simple there um, in its simplest incarnation means generalizing from rational VOAs to logarithmic VOAs. Um, the, the simplest logarithmic vertex algebra, um, the so-called triplet model, um, and that's been generalized also in many ways, but the generalization that's relevant here um, is in terms of what are called fagin tipunin algebras. Um, that's what FT stands for. Um, so, um, so this is, this is fagin tipunin um, fagin tipunin algebras are defined for for any uh, Lie algebra G. Um, and with suitable matching, the representation category, the module category of these Fagan to Poonin algebras is supposed to match modules for quantum groups at, at certain roots of unity. Um, well, so it was supposed to, I think it was conjectured a long time ago and, and, and in recent work that I give a few references here. Um, the equivalence has been proven in certain cases and, and generalized to an equivalence of, of actual braided tensor categories. Um, I think possibly modular tensor categories um, that uh, sort of the data you need to, to build a TQFT out, um, out of this. Um, okay, so said a lot has been done, but hasn't, yeah? Sorry, was there a question? Okay. Um, so what hasn't been done um, is, is the physics side of this. It, so Trent Simons uh, led to a lot of um, sort of amazing computations and predictions, um, things like, like geometric quantization to produce Hilbert spaces and Konsevich integrals and, and so on. And, and the Trent Simons part of this non-semi-simple story does not exist yet. Um, so, so what, what we're doing, um, part of what we're doing is, is actually to propose a, a quantum field theory that fits um, in this third physics perspective. Um, some non-semi-simple aspects, I should say, have, have appeared. Um, triplet algebras have started appearing in 
supersymmetric theories um, in, in a paper on, um, well, uh, on modular, 3D modularity, maybe, by, by Cheng Chen, Ferrari, Gukat, and Harrison. Um, so, so logarithmic things have started appearing in particular in a supersymmetric context. Um, and supergroup Chen Simon theories have also been investigated, and I, I would, using sort of physics language, I would say that they fall into the same universality class. Um, they supergroup Chen Simon theories have a lot of properties in common with the theories I, I will discuss today. Um, they, they're not; they're just not not exactly the direction um, we're, we're going in. Um, so, so the result I want to talk about. Um, um, in part proposal and part result, um, is, is that there exists a three-dimensional quantum field theory that is topological, um, whose category of line operators matches um, sort of the big quantum group at a root of unity category. Um, and here the case I'll focus on is an even root of unity, and I am certain about this in type A, and there, there are obvious generalizations for, for groups of other type. Um, um, and the category of lines matches uh, modules for the fake and Tipunin algebra. And in fact, the way we actually get at this more naturally um, is in a sort of morally level rank dual of the fake and Tipunin algebra. So there are actually two, two vertex algebras that appear um, that, that have equivalent categories of modules. Um, and um, so uh, we have a, what I would call a physics proof that um, the vertex algebra categories are, are the categories of lines in, in the QFT I will talk about for the case of um, certainly, uh, sorry, for the case of SL2, I think for general type A. Um, I, you, you, if to make the statement, I have to actually say what I what I mean by physics proof, um, taken suitably liberally. I, I would would say this makes sense for for general type A, um, and uh, Thomas Kreutzig uh, in, in our in our paper gives a proof that uh, for for SL two, uh, the two vertex algebras I, I showed here are equivalent, and it's already known that the Fagan Tipton algebra is. Um, related to quantum SL2 modules um, at a root of unity. Um, so sort of the new bit is the left side of, of this picture. Um, the, right, so whatever quantum field theory sits on the left here um, had better be labeled by a group or a Lie algebra um, and and an integer k that tells you what root of unity we're working at. And I have changed the page on my screen, but it's not coming through, so I may need to remirror just a sec. Oh, right, you guys can see that. Okay, let me just play again. It's good. Um, right, so the theory is starts out as a 3D n equals four theory, and it's mostly a 3D n equals four theory called T of G um, that can be analyzed using all of the lovely algebraic techniques that you're hearing about in other parts of this workshop. Um, but it has a slight twist. So, um, so it's sort of a mix of a 3D n equals four theory and a trans Simons theory. Um, that's what that G of K is doing there. Um, um, and so it doesn't, it, it falls slightly outside the class of things that are easily analyzed algebraically right now. And one of the points of my talk is to motivate all of you to think about um, how to um, how to extend. Um, sorry, and I see Sasha has a question in the chat. Um, so that's for all G. So um, this theory that I'm talking about here makes sense for all G and all, um, um, I, I was asking all, about the, all, pre the previous line about yeah, this. Yeah, and all uh, global forms. So no, um, there are subtleties when I, I would expect it to work for ADE type, and and there are 
there are huge technical things and that happen later where some Langland duals need to be involved and, um, and, and yeah, so there, there's some natural guesses for what happens, but the story is not so simple. Okay, thank you. Um, and it's like, it's sort of clear in, in each, from each perspective why the story is not so simple. Matching up the various subtleties is, is hard and is something we realize we should not attempt in, in this first shot at, um, at this project. Um, so one can write down a sort of a Lagrangian, um, an action for, for this theory in type A um, using a, a twisted BV formalism, um, which is, is kind of nice. So in that sense, it's, it's very much like Chern Simons. It's, it's a concrete theory um, with fields. Um, and um, using that Lagrangian, one can write down a boundary vertex algebra um, the analog of WZW. And there are in fact, two of them that show up. And in, in WZW, there's also another algebra that you could use, which is the level rank dual of WZW that has exactly the same category of modules. Um, and, and here as well, there, there's sort of two natural algebras that show up that are um, level rank duals of each other in the appropriate generalization of level rank. Um, um, and it, again, it, it should be possible, like it, it's sort of clear what to write down for other types from 40 brain constructions, um, but, but there are lots of technical issues that show up. Um, um, right, uh, so we write all this down and then, then the natural question is like, what, what, what you gain from the physics and what can you compute to check that, that this guess is even correct? Um, so it's easy to compute um, using supersymmetric localization techniques, um, the, the growth and degroup of the category of line operators um, and Euler characters of Hilbert spaces, which are, um, I should have said this, there's, there's this D bar sitting everywhere. Sorry, not D bar, there's a DB sitting everywhere. So the physics theory, because it's this physics. sort of, the supersymmetric theory that needs to be topologically twisted to get something topological is like sort of naturally a derived beast or like the category of line operators is naturally a DG category. And, and so all of the equivalences that we get in particular between QFT and the VLAs are uh, that, that first equivalence is a derived equivalence. Um, there, there are many different ways of describing the category of line operators and it shows up as a DG category and is equivalent to the derived category of modules for this VLA. Um, the thing that's also relevant on the quantum group side is the derived category of quantum group modules. Um, Hilbert spaces associated to surfaces are going to, to exist in many cohomological degrees and their Euler characters are easy things to compute as partition functions. Um, harder things to compute um, are things like the category itself from a QFT perspective or the Hilbert space itself in a mapping class group action. And I'll, I'll indicate sort of some, some techniques to try to go about that. Um, but like th this is where like fully generalizing like algebraic approaches to 3D n equals four theories, things like the BFN construction would be really useful. Okay. Um, that That's the end of the long introduction. Um, let me know if there are any questions. Um, interrupt me at any time as well. Um, this next I want to actually say a few more concrete things uh, about the representation theory of quantum groups that are root of unity. And I'm, I'm just going to stick to the case of SL2 here um, for illustrative purposes. Um, so, um, right, so quantum SL2 uh, looks like standard SL2, um, except the Cartan generator has been exponentiated. Um, and it looks like 
there is a question coming, but I'll wait till it actually comes. Um, um, at an even root of unity, in fact, at any root of unity, but even is the, the relevant situation for me, um, there's, uh, in, in addition to the center that comes from, from Casimir operators, that, that sort of the Harish Chandra center, um, there's an extra bit of the center um, that just comes from um, Kth powers of, of EF and big K. Um, these extra central elements act uh, as constants on any indecomposable representations. Um, and so the representation theory sort of decomposes um, into what, well, into little pieces based on what values these central elements take. Um, and the fancy way to say that um, is that it ends up fibering over spec of this other part of the center. Um, and this other part of the center uh, parameterizes an open cell in the group PGL2. Um, okay, um, sorry, just looking at the chat. So um, the reason PGL2 is coming up here is because it's the Langlands dual of, uh, of SL2. Um, and um, at, at, a, at an even root of unity, um, the fancy way to say this is that the category of modules fibers over PGL2 um, at, at an odd root of unity, it fibers over SL2. Um, yeah. Um, there, I, there's, I think technically I should also say this is a coherent sheaf of categories, which is also something that shows up in the field theory. Uh, but I think that's all I want to say for now. Um, a really simple example of this um, is that when, um, so if you if you take a diagonal element of PGL2 um, that has some eigenvalue e to the alpha um, here, um, one would associate that to mod to a subcategory of modules um, on which e to the k and f to the k act as zero, sort of coming from these off diagonal zeros, um, and k to the 2k um, acts as e to the alpha. I um, hope that wasn't too confusing a description. Um, I should also say like the relevant thing about these, these different fibers or different stocks of, of the sheaf um, is, is that there, there are no homs between them. So they're, they're each full subcategories. The total category is a direct sum of, of, all, of, of all of these stocks. Um, and um, yeah, um, right, uh, that's, that's all I'll say. So, um, sorry about that terrible transition. Um, so it was, it was observed, uh, it, was, it was proven a long time ago by Dick and Cheney and Katz and in the even root of unity case by Beck that um, what, what the stock or fiber looks like uh, above a particular element of PGL2, so how the center acts, um, only depends on the conjugacy class of this element um, in, in PGL2 up to isomorphism. Um, and then what was realized uh, a little later on uh, by initially by Kashayev and Reshetikin is that this sort of uh, fibering of the category over PGL2, um, it should lead to not just to invariance of links in three manifolds, but more generally to invariance of links in three, man in three manifolds with flat connections in the complements of the links. Um, so this was roughly, but not entirely correct. Um, and was morally correct. Um, and it's been made very precise um, in the case of links, uh, links in S3 in a recent paper by uh, Blanchet, Gere, Patra, Mirand, and Reshetikin. Um, um, so, so they build uh, an invariance of three manifolds, oh, sorry, invariance of links in S3 with flat PGL2 connections in the complement of the link 
Um, and there's work in progress um, trying to, to really promote that to a full TQFT that, that gives invariance of three manifolds with, um, with flat PGL2 connections. Um, the picture that I always have in mind when, when trying to understand why, why this should be true um, is, is the following. Um, so, so the category has all these different blocks or, or stocks labeled by, by elements of PGL2. Um, one should, if, if trying to translate this to some sort of physics picture uh, or a topology picture that involves say links where the strands are labeled by objects of this category, um, one should think <laughs> that the piece of the category that yeah, you have an object from labeled by some element G um, depends on the holonomy of your background your flat background connection, connection. The, the flat connection that you've enriched the three manifold with um, in a small loop going around this line. Um, and if you just have a single line, um, it's only the conjugacy class of the holonomy should matter, which is consistent with the old um, theorem of Deconcini, Katz and Percesi that um, a, a fiber of this category only, mat only depends on the conjugacy class. Um, now, if you want to start building a TQFT out of this, you need to make sure that this is compatible with the tensor structure in, in the category. Um, and you would expect if you're looking at base pointed holonomies that when two lines collide, um, one gets the tensor uh, product of those representations um, using the Hopf algebra structure of the quantum group. Um, and that had better be compatible with multiplying the base pointed holonomies. Um, and it's literally true when all of your holonomies are diagonal and it is almost true when the holonomies are general non-abelian things and the almost was uh, described precisely um, in, in this uh, initially by Kashayev and Reshetikin and in this later paper by Blanchegir, Patiro Miran and Reshetikin. Um, I'll just focus on the abelian case here. Okay. Um, so this sort of setup where uh, we're looking at three manifolds with decorated by flat connections um, appears in physics when we have a quantum field theory with a global symmetry um, as opposed to a gauged symmetry. Um, so, so quantum field theories with global symmetries can couple to connections um, that, that are not fields that one integrates over in the path integral, but fields that are just put in by hand and fixed for all time. Um, and so the sort of theory we're looking for had better have some sort of global symmetry. Um, line operators in the background of a holonomy defect like this um, were described really nicely a few years ago um, in a paper of Victor Mikhailov's um, in the context of, of supersymmetric transignments, but, but the story is, is sorry, in the context of supergroup transignments, but, but the story is very similar here. Um, okay. Um, now let me try to describe um, what a few of these fibers look like, um, just, so, just so I can say some concrete things later on. Um, if we take um, a generic diagonal element of PGL2, um, then we look at representations of UQSL2 um, on which K to the 2K acts as that eigenvalue and E to the K and F to the K act as zero. Um, the category ends up being semi-simple with uh, exactly 2K semi-simple objects. Um, that look sort of like standard highest weight modules, um, except um, the weights are the eigenvalues of K rather than of H. Um, and so they're, they're Q to the something. Um, they all have dimension K and they wrap around the unit circle, um, sort of the, 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 eigen, uh, the weights wrap around the unit circle, um, which gives rise to vanishing quantum dimensions. Um, which is one of the things that needs to be 
regularized in order to build a TQFT out of this, but that was done. So it, this is um, the ADO invariant um, uses precisely these sorts of representations. Um, and um, Murakami also worked on that in the 90s and then Constantino Gear and Patiro Miran sort of systematized the data you would need to not get all of your link invariants to be zero. Um, otherwise, quantum vanishing quantum dimensions would naively tell you that even the hop and uh, even the unknot has expectation value of zero. Um, these sort of generic stocks of the category have an extremely simple tensor product um, that that sort of looks like what you would expect uh, for an in an abelian theory. Um, it's just like for quantum GL one. Um, it leads to very easy calculations of dimensions of putative Hilbert spaces or spaces of states um, on various surfaces. Um, so um, to get so, yeah. a space of states on the torus, um, you just you can generate states by filling the torus into a solid torus um, and putting objects colored by all the different possible representations along its core. Um, now, since we're dealing with a QFT enriched by flat connections, um, we shouldn't just say the Hilbert space of the torus, we should say the Hilbert space of the torus together with a flat PGL2 connection on it. Um, and putting an abelian connection on there um, with a specified holonomy around the meridian of the torus uh, tells us what piece of the category to choose objects from on the core. Um, and so we just take the 2k different objects in that piece of the category along the core that gives us 2k states in that Hilbert space. Um, I also should say, I'm saying Hilbert space because in physics, we always say Hilbert. Um, these, um, uh, these are not necessarily Hilbert spaces in the mathematical sense in, in the sorts of TQFTs I'll be discussing. Um, they, they are vector spaces, they have duals, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily isomorphic to, to their dual um, in, a, in a natural way. Um, so I should really just say vector spaces of states. Um, in genus G, uh, one can use the very simple monoidal structure to also like draw all um, trivalent networks of, um, I keep wanting to say line operators inside the core of a handle body whose boundary is a particular genus G surface and count what the options are. Um, and one gets two to the G, um, K to the three G minus three different states. And that, that's a very easy combinatorics problem. Um, okay, so that's sort of the generic setting. Um, when, when you're looking at a surface with a generic uh, flat connection on it. Um, okay. There's also the, the most interesting, most non-generic case when the flat connection is trivial. Um, um, so, so the connection itself, which is zero everywhere, it's holonomy is one everywhere. Um, and so in this case, looking at what sorts of, what do we label a line by? In, in the presence of trivial holonomy, um, the answer is representations of what is called the small or restricted quantum group. Um, so it's modules on which k to the k, uh, k to the two k acts as one and e to the k and f to the k act as zero. Um, so this is an extremely well-studied category in, in representation theory. Um, it is not semi-simple. Um, it has, two to the K simple objects um, that can form interesting extensions with one another. Um, the two to the K simple objects roughly look like two copies of ordinary representations of SL2 of dimensions one, two, three, um, all the way up to K. Um, and they, uh, taking the projective covers of the simple objects one gets projectives um, that have sort of diamond structures and movie diagrams. 
Um, and there, so there are two K decomposable projectives in in this piece of the category as well. Um, the semi simplification that was used by Rashtikin and Turayev uses a single copy of the of what look like ordinary SL2 representations of dimensions one up through k minus one. Um, and so if one sort of quotients out by everything else, setting it to zero, um, another way of saying quotient out by everything else is set to zero, everything that has a vanishing quantum dimension. Uh, one gets a semi-simplified category that leads to the old story. Um, the Kashaev invariant that's involved in the volume conjecture is defined using um, this last simple and projective representation of dimension K. Um, and, and finally, um, sort of the entire thing is, uh, is what Libyshenko considered when, when starting to define non-semi-simple TQFTs in the 90s. Okay, um, so I mentioned at the beginning um, that um, in general, our spaces of states on surfaces would be cohomological beasts. Um, they, they have multiple cohomological degrees. Um, in terms of the category of lines, mathematically, um, one would calculate the Hilbert space of states in general by taking Hochschild homology of the appropriate piece of the category, um, depending on what flat connection we've chosen. And so on a torus with zero flat connection, we have to use the small quantum group category um, and we should find its Hilbert space as Hochschild homology of the small quantum group category. Um, quick physics word. So what that amounts to is considering the fact that uh, when there are morphisms among the objects in your category, you don't, you can't just wrap single lines around the core, but you have to let, consider junctions of multiple lines. Um, and just simply considering junctions of your objects will give you um, H80, uh, or the, the um, yeah, will give you the zero, zeroth Hochschild homology. Um, higher degrees in Hochschild homology, uh, in Hochschild homology come from integrating descendants of junctions around paths in this core. Um, that is a statement for anyone in the audience who uh, knows about descendants on the side. Um, anyway, this is a totally, totally sensible thing to do both physically and mathematically. Um, in order to compute Hochschild homology of this category, it's useful to have a geometric description of it. Um, and uh, Arkhipov, Bezukovnikov, and Ginsburg, and then Bezukovnikov and Lakovska gave such a geometric description, um, which at an even root of unity amounts to saying that as a category, not a monoidal category, but just as a category, um, the, the derived category of representations of the small quantum group has um, sort of two semi-simple pieces or two, well, that's just coming from the two simples that were also projective. Um, and then a bunch of copies of the derived category of coherent sheaves on T star of the flag manifold, um, K, K minus one copies of that. Um, that gives us a geometric way to compute Hochschild homology, which ends up looking like, um, uh, I wanna say total double cohomology. Um, looks like total cohomology of, of these of P star flags computed in an algebraic way. Um, and, and then there's an answer. Uh, the, the relevant space of states becomes infinite dimensional um, with non-negative cohomological degrees and it's finite in each cohomological degree. Um, and the part that Libushenko would have used back in the 90s Oh, I guess I, I say that on the next slide. Um, and the part that Libyshenko would have used is just H80, um, but, but there ought to be a derived generalization of, of all of the earlier work and also the current work of uh, CGP and, and collaborators. Um, okay. 
Um, I've written it here. I've, I've sort of written what the different degrees look like in terms of representations of the symmetry group in PGL2 that acts on the star flag. Um, there are also nice things to say about deforming from trivial connection to non-zero generic connection. Um, um, which, there we go. Um, which again, I think I need to, that's the slide I actually want to be on. Um, I'll, I'll just say this very briefly, but but to go, so at, at generic connection, the space of states had dimension 2K. At zero connection, the space of states is this infinite dimensional thing with finite dimensional graded components. Um, and there's a differential that one can turn on um, to deform the infinite dimensional thing to something that exists only in degree zero and has dimension 2K. Um, the Euler character is invariant under this deformation. The Euler character doesn't care what flat connection you put on. Um, and at a category level, um, the field theory interpretation that I'm about to get to um, also suggests that there's there's just there's a well this is a sheet a coherent sheaf of categories, um, and very close to the identity element uh, in PGL two. Um, coherent sheaves gets deformed to matrix factorizations with a superpotential um, that involves the complex moment map um, for, um, for a certain element of PGL2 that, that's the stock that's defined by the stock we're looking at. Um, okay. Um, and I said that Euler characters don't change under this deformation. Um, okay, that's, that's. sorry, I probably said too much about that. I've, I have really enjoyed during this project um, sort of learning and trying to put together more of the structure of, of this big category of, of representations of the quantum group at a root of unity. As you can probably tell. Okay, so, now I wanna take all of that information and translate it quickly to, uh, to physics and then try to explain what, what one still has to do on the physics side. So we're looking for a quantum field theory that is labeled by a group, maybe an algebra and a level, um, an, an integer K. It should be Trent Simons like um, in that, like it sort of looks very close to the Resch Tikin Turayev category. Um, should have some finite, like in, in each piece of the category, there is like a finite number of objects. It should have something that looks sort of looks like Wilson lines. And in this previous paper on recursion relations for ADO invariance, we found like we found structure that was very, very, very similar to the simple or the semi-simple story involving so so ADO, ADO invariants are different from color Jones polynomials, but they obey the same recursion relations, um, and so there are a lot of things that sort of look the same. And so, so you should see something Trent Simons like here. Um, however, the uh, line operators in this theory should have non-trivial junctions. We should not be getting a semi-simple category. Um, if, a very easy signal that a quantum field theory gives rise to a non-semi-simple category of lines is that there are non-trivial local operators. Um, this is the sort of thing that the BFN construction computes. So BFN computes an algebra um, and, and it's the algebra of local operators in a 3D field theory. Um, and, and so that construction applied to this story had better give you something non-trivial. Um, if you apply it to Trent Simons, it, it just gives you uh, the identity and that's it. Um, and there should be a global symmetry around that leads to flat connections. Um, those criteria um, lead um, to an essentially unique um, answer, um, which is, if you're not familiar with the physics side of the story is, going to look strange and weird and not unique at all. Um, but 
Um, anyway, so the the easiest thing one can do to satisfy those properties is to start with a 3D n equals four supersymmetric theory um, that Gayoto and Witten introduced called T of G. Um, it even though I write a group here, it secretly only depends on a Lie algebra. Um, and roughly speaking, it has symmetry G times the Langlands dual of G. Is, is, sorry, is this literally true? I thought it only had G symmetry and also it's, it's mirror dual had the G check symmetry, is that? No, I mean, it's, no, I mean, it has both. It's, it, it, one acts on the Higgs branch and one acts on the Coulomb branch, but the, the, yeah, but the I thought that what acts on the Coulomb branch is not a symmetry of the theory, isn't it? No, of course it is. No, 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 it's, it's exactly on the same footing. Okay. Um, it, if you write down a Lagrangian for this for the theory in type A, um, all you see is the maximal torus, but uh, otherwise it's um, the way you write down the theory in terms of fields and what you call the Higgs branch and what you call the Coulomb branch is is arbitrary at the level of quantum field theory, um, and and so so it really does it, it really does have both of these symmetries. Um, well, I see. So, 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 so you mean that it acts, it, it acts before, before you twist it? Yeah, yes, 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 exactly. Okay, okay, sure. Um, and, and they act in different ways. Um, of, of, right, of course, after you twist, depending on what sort of twist you use, um, uh, only one of them will appear as a symmetry of the twist. Or they'll act in very, very different ways. Um, okay, yeah, okay, now I, I see what you mean now. Yeah. Okay, um, so then we take G and, and gauge it further. Um, but, but this gauging is different from the standard 3, 3DN equals four gauging. It, it's something one can do in theories with less supersymmetry. Um, and so in physics terms, I would say use an N equals two vector multiplet. Um, that'll, so this less supersymmetric gauging um, allows the introduction of a non-trivial turn Simons level. Um, and so one sort of writes down, if, you, if you're not worried about supersymmetry, you write down the turn Simons Lagrangian for G and uh, couple it to the rest of this theory T of G. And the result of this gauging, does it still have some supersymmetry left? Or... It does, but this is subtle. So um, in physics terms, uh, it only, if you write down a Lagrangian and you try to do this, in terms of fields, you can only see n equals two supersymmetry. Um, in the infrared or with a suitable twist, um, it should have full n equals four, um, but seeing that is tricky. Um, before getting to topological twist, so um, maybe I'll, I'll also say later. Um, so in using the BV formalism, one can actually write down a Lagrangian that does not look like it has n equals two or n equals four supersymmetry, but has the single supercharge you need to topologically twist um, to, to perform what would otherwise be the A twist. Um, so physically in the infrared, this thing regains full on n equals four supersymmetry and you can topologically twist, um, but, there, but there are subtle keys around. Um, um, there, if if you believe that this has any equals four supersymmetry, um, there there are two twists available. Um, one that's focused on the Coulomb branch, and one that's focused on the Higgs branch, or an A twist and a B twist. Um, the G dual symmetry behaves in different ways with respect to the two choices. Um, the one that will leave you with an ability to turn on flat G dual connections um, is, is the A twist in this case. And it's, it's the one that's sort of focused on the colon branch. Um, the B twist of the same theory was something that Kapustin and Salina studied 10 years ago um, in something they called Trin Simon's Rosansky witten theory. Um, so the, the B twist is, is the Rosansky witten twist. Um, but it is it is is completely different theory. It leads it, it looks it behaves very differently, and it's, it's not the thing that's relevant for quantum groups that are rooted in it. Um, okay, 
Um, so the other thing to say is that th this is a quiver gauge theory. Um, so the, in, sorry, when, when the group is type A, when we're looking at SUN, this is a quiver gauge theory. Um, most of the quiver is the quiver you would write down for T star flag. It's the Nakajima quiver variety for T star flag. Um, however, uh, in T star flag, there's a framing node uh, that has rank N um, for, for, for GLN or for, uh, for SUN. Um, that, that, final, that final framing node is the thing that's gauged with an extra churn Simons level. Um, and, and so the gauge group of the theory is a product of, of GL1 through not GLN minus one, but all the way through GLN with a churn Simons yeah. level for, for GLN. Um, before this extra churn Simons gauging, both the Higgs and the Coulomb branch look like T star of the flag manifold. Um, the extra gauging uh, destroys the Higgs branch and it actually seems to do nothing at all to the Coulomb branch. Um, except to, to, well, saying T-star flag is maybe incorrect. I should rather say it's the yeah, Nobel Con. And it, it seems to, this extra turn Simons gauging seems to introduce some extra singularities at, at the origin of the Nobel Con, um, which I can't discuss any more precisely than that. Um, what do you mean when I say it destroys the Higgs branch? Um, that's right. Um, so, so you would, I mean, sorry, the thing that it does is it, um, uh, it, it takes a Kähler quotient of the Higgs branch. Um, not, not a hyper Kähler quotient, but, but just an ordinary. So, so, um, you, if there weren't a turn Simons level around, you would expect the Higgs, the Higgs branch to just be quotiented by GLN. Um, okay. So you see that because we have less supersymmetry, the Higgs branch is no longer holomorphic symplectic or have exactly. a yep. and so the, so it, so you would just take the ordinary quotient, right? Exactly. I see. Okay. Um, the maximal torus of the flat. Uh, the maximal torus of, in this case, it's PGL2 or PGLN um, shows up in terms of resolution, complexified resolution parameters for the Coulomb branch. Um, oh, sorry, they're, they're deformation parameters for, for the Coulomb branch or, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'm short on time, so I think that's that's all I'll say. There, there's a lot. I think there's been a lot about 3D n equals four theories in this conference, um, and the Wilson line operators that we wanted to see um, show up for the Chern Simons factor. Um, it is surprising in general that one would have Wilson lines in this A twist that is focused on the Coulomb branch. It can happen here. Um, precisely because of the Trent Simons level. Uh, it would, would not happen on K is zero. Um, okay, so then there's a black box. So this I claim um, is a theory one can write down a Lagrangian for in the BV formalism. Um, there are uh, lots of localization techniques that apply to that, or just, or if you just think of it as an N equals two supersymmetric theory, there are localization techniques that will compute partition functions and expectations of Wilson line operators in this theory, um, starting with work of Nekrasov and Chetoshvili um, and uh, recent work on untwisted indices. Um, this, so in, in, like half a day, uh, one can code up uh, a computation that, that spits out Euler characters for uh, spaces of states. And to remind you, Euler characters don't care about what flat connection is turned on. Um, and when on the nose gets the right answer um, for SU2 and, and we've, we've checked for SU3 and SU, SU4 as well. Um, 
also using the beta root analysis of Microsoft and Chatham that that gives you expectation values of line operators, uh, one can get the growth and decaying of, uh, of the small quantum group. Um, so that's with, with zero flat connection. And so that, that tells you something about the small quantum group, but it doesn't tell you anything about the interesting non semi simple behavior. Um, so to, to actually see directly from the field theory more of the non semi simple stuff, um, it, one should try to apply, we're getting there, um, a lot of the more modern more methods modern that have been developed in the last five years or so. Um, and including by BFN and Webster and work of mine with uh, Gayatri Bolimar, Hilburn uh, and, and company um, and lots of people and uh, recent work of, uh, of Matt Bolimar and co-authors in, in writing down Hilbert spaces. Um, so, um, so there are algebraic techniques one can use. One has to sort of adapt the current techniques to this sort of hybrid case that is mostly 3dn equals four in the A twist, with a bit of 3dn equals two with a turn Simons level. The sort of thing one expects for the category of line operators looks as follows. So if and I, I want to compare on this slide what happens in ordinary Chern Simons theory to the, the quantum field theories I'm discussing. So, in Chern Simons theory, you can write ordinary Chern Simons as a 3D n equals 2 theory and use modern techniques to say what the category of line operators should be. And the answer is um, loop group equivariant coherent sheaves on a point, which, which of course, is. is um, representations of the loop group at level K, which is the correct thing for to match WCW and the simple, semi-simplified quantum group and the whole term Simon story. Um, in these new theories, what one gets instead should look something like uh, loop group equivariant coherent sheaves on a deformation of uh, of, the, of the cotangent bundle of the loop space of the Higgs branch of this quiver. Um, and if I didn't say loop group equivariant, and I did say deformation, it's the deformation that deforms coherent sheaves to D modules. Um, and, D, and D modules on the loop space of the Higgs branch is due to a bunch of the references above, um, the modern description for what a category of line operators, the A twist of a 3D n equals four theory should be. Um, and one needs to somehow combine that B module deformation with a loop group equivariance. Uh, and maybe there's just an obvious way to do that in ma mathematically. I, um, I, I have not thought about it enough except to make this heuristic statement. The a very, very concrete way to do this um, that looks very close to the sort of category I've, I've written down is to go to vertex algebras, which I'll get to in the last minus one minutes of the talk. Um, so the, one of the vertex algebras I, I will write down look very much like functions, like the, the derived algebra of functions on the space that we're taking coherent sheaves over. Um, okay, uh, Hilbert spaces. So in Trent Simons, in geometric quantization, they show up as sections of the kth power of some line bundle over bungee. Um, and in this new setting, they should show up as sections of the same line bundle tensored with a very complicated sheaf that uh, if you don't turn any flat connection on is, is, is infinite rank, um, but finite rank in each cohomological degree. Uh, and it's a sheaf that uh, initially Gaiota described for the T of G theories. Um, and this is again, something that we can heuristically write down. Um, I, have not done any explicit calculations with that yet, um, except in the case where the surface is genus zero. Um, so for S2, uh, one is supposed to get local operators in the TQFT, uh, and one gets a one dimensional space associated to S2 in Chern Simons and functions on T star flag in, in this other theory, which is functions on T star flag is the thing you would get from the derived category of small quantum group representations I mentioned earlier as well. Um, 
and it's it's functions on the colon branch, which is why I said like, the colon branch as a variety has not changed, but um, but extra stackiness is involved. Um, for other for higher genus surfaces, this sort of makes sheaf description suggests that you should get something roughly looking like the trent simons hilbert space times a factor of Dalbo homolo Dalboka homology of T star flag. Um, and that is roughly what we got by computing um, Hochschild homology of the small quantum group representation category. It was almost of this form with a few extra factors. Um, so at, at least things look reasonable, but, but it would be nice to actually do the computation more precisely. Um, in this geometric quantization language. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll finish up quickly. So um, first there's there's some 4D construction of this quantum field theory that I mentioned that is closely related to geometric Langlands and 4DS duality um, with different boundary conditions um, that I can answer questions about at the end if, if anyone else is interested. Um, one side of this 40 setup seems to be closely related to, um, to that work of Gukov et al. from, from last year um, that I mentioned in the introduction. Um, and finally, there are vertex algebras involved. And the vertex algebras come from either putting boundary conditions on the 3D quantum field theory um, or by working in this 4D construction and considering not just the sandwich of boundary conditions, but a corner. So, slicing this with yet a third boundary condition and using work on vertex algebras at the corner that Sasha must have talked about yesterday. Um, anyway, one can extract vertex algebras from these brain constructions and from the field theory. And one, there are actually two natural ways to do it. Um, and I mentioned level rank duality before. So in in the classic Trent Simon story, there are two WZW models that play a role that are cosets of each other inside some number of free fermions. Um, and in the new story, there are also two algebras that play a role. And one is the Fagan to Putin algebra, and one is something new. Um, and the something new is the thing that looks like functions on that weird space that I was trying to take loop group equivariant D modules on. Um, Okay, so the fake and Tipunin side of this directly relates to the small quantum group. And I haven't turned on any flat connections when making these statements. The vertex algebras can also be deformed by flat connections. Um, and this, this new vertex algebra, um, I'll say it, well, say it very abstractly is, you, you can sort of read it off from the quiver of the theory. Uh, one, one puts together some number of copies of a, bit of a beta gamma system for each edge in the quiver, um, and then takes a BRST quotient by GL1 up to GLN for the nodes in the quiver, um, and then a final not BRST quotient, but just derived invariance for a final copy of, of SLN at level K. Um, so that's, anyway, that's, that's the new vertex algebra. Um, and uh, Thomas uh, Thomas Kreitzik showed that this was actually dual to to uh, to take into Poonin for SL two. Um, okay, but that's sorry, I'm horribly out of time. So that's all I'll say. There's there's a there's, there's a really amazing vertex algebra story here, and um, <laughs> Thomas could give a one plus hour talk on on the vertex algebra side of this. Um, Um, just to finish up, let me say, so I've, I've indicated that, that like, it would be really awesome to sort of generalize the uh, BFN-like and other like D modules on the loop space constructions for line operators um, that Hilburn and, and Phil Sang Yu and, and myself and others have discussed um, to, and, and Webster, uh, to generalize that to include transcendence levels um, that, that should land in this case on the small quantum group module category, um, if our conjectures are all correct. Um, it'd be great to implement this geometric quantization perspective to start looking at Hilbert spaces and more so 
um, to get actions of the modular group or the mapping class group on, on spaces of states, which are currently kind of hard to compute. Um, and there's been work for the Taurus um, looking at, I think this is Lakovsk and, and, and Key, uh, looking at the action of the modular group on Hochschild homology of that small oh, yeah. quantum group category, but I don't know of anything in higher genus. Um, and the whole thing should fit together beautifully in some derived version of this CGP like uh, TQFT. Um, okay, thanks. So Jan has a question. Now I'm able to let him speak. Yeah. Yana, can you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Tudor. So I have hey. actually, hi, uh, two questions rather technical. First, if I uh, um, can I uh, uh, analytically extend uh, your uh, generalized Sharon Simons uh, theory with respect to the level and whether it will um, anyhow different from ordinary Sharon Simons. So, so yes, the answer is certainly yes in some cases. Um, and um, so um, like, like Sergei Gukov and, and co-authors already described the like, analytic continuation of the ADO invariant. Um, in, in it, the analytic continuation uses a generalization of this 4D setup that I wrote down with different boundary conditions. So um, um, it's, it's, it's in some ways easier to discuss the analytic continuation than what happens at, at integer level. Um, and it's, it's very, very similar to what Witten did with ordinary churn Um so, so like the different choices there are all about choosing boundary conditions carefully in this 4D story. Uh, um, but one needs to, one needs to move to a half space uh, and, uh, rather than a yeah, and, yeah. Okay. yeah I, I got it. And the second question you mentioned this uh, work of uh, Gayota and Rapchak on the vertex algebra at the corner. Yes, uh, 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 I, I understand that it's kind of a ge geometry. It's sort of a. Um, uh, Certain derived category of coherence shifts on uh, on say three dim on C, C cube uh, supported on some uh, fed divisors given by coordinate planes, uh, which kind of define you that corner. Uh, now, uh, how so, do you... so that so this is a simple case of that where yeah yeah so, the, the, yeah. yeah. Okay, but just look look at this simple ca simple case. Uh, mm, so, how do you see this uh, mm, geometry, and, and do you see it at all? Um, yes. So, so there. Um, let me see if I can actually draw on here. So, the thing you're talking about um, involves sort of the the full vertex corner. Mm -hmm. um, and here we're looking at n zero and zero brains, um, and and so so that's that's trying to describe say what happens here, um, and one also needs to tilt um, to tilt the brains relative to each other a bit uh, according to the Trent Simons level. So um, so what I drew was probably not quite right, and so instead of that, one needs to have some sort of tilted corner. Um, um, so one can extract from that, from the corner, the pieces that show up here. Um, so in one of these corner constructions, the one that gives rise to Fagan to Kunin, um, one starts off with a corner that after the sum, this, after the simplification, uh, spits out a W algebra. Uh, and so the general corner is there are these like Y M N N algebras that are like massive generalizations of W algebras. 
Um, in your story, you see only uh, N00? Exactly. Ah, I, I, and the, but it would, like, of course, like, it would be beautiful to then like, start generalizing this and, and relate to other quantum groups. Um, but but it's, it's, yeah, so my story is a very, very small part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's colliding two corners. One, and they both have N00, but with slightly different decorations on them. Um, and so one gives rise to a W algebra and the other gives rise to, to, uh, uh, to Ketz Moody or rather to WZW. Uh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and so <laughs> colliding those and taking an infinite level limit um, gives Fagan to Poonin. Mm. Okay, yeah, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other uh, question? Okay. Yeah, I have uh, a question, can I uh, maybe, I mean, uh, <laughs> Summarize what you did in the end. I just want to understand if, uh, uh, if I understand if I understood it correctly. So you can see this. Uh, so you take this theory of phi g and then you sort of uh, gauge it in a strong Simon sense, and you get some um, n equal to supersymmetric theory, which still has um, a and b twist and um, Higgs and yes. Coulomb branch. Uh, but yes. uh, okay, that's it, it's, it's, now, it's kind of it's kind of magical that it still has a and b twists. Uh, Magical yeah. in what sense? So you think? I mean, is is it, so? You mean that general and so two theories? Well, they don't. They only have a holomorphic twist. I see. Um, ah, so okay. they, they have a yeah. holomorphic topological twist. Mm -hmm. um, and and so what? The way we actually analyze this is by starting with the holomorphic topological twist and observing that there is an extra differential that can still be turned on to to deform that to a topological twist. I see. So, so it's not something general, it's, it's just kind of specific. No, it's, it's very special. Um, okay. Yes. Now, what is the statement? Sorry, th this is probably the main point, one of the main points of your talk, which I, uh, which I missed. What is the statement about the relationship between this theory and representation of the quantum group? I mean... Uh, um, so, um, so this, the A-twist of this theory um, has, still has a symmetry, and it's the symmetry that acts on the Coulomb branch. Okay. Um, um, and, and, and the Coulomb branch is, is, is still the no-potent no cone. So, so the, the, the symmetry is, is the Langlands dual group. Okay. Um, so one can, if one wants, um, turn on a background flat connection for that symmetry. Um, so to work on three manifolds with flat connections. If you don't do that, and you just ask, without any deformation, what is the category of line operators? Um, the, the category of line operators in that theory is representations of the small quantum group. It's, it's the, it should be the derived category of representations of the small quantum group. So the category of line operators is the, uh, uh, for the A-twist. For the A-twist. Okay. Yeah. And um, this is something that you sort of can more or less prove or, I mean, this Yes, is a... um, but we, the only way we can only way... actually prove it is by introducing a holomorphic boundary that condition that supports, that supports a vertex algebra. Vertex algebra. Vertex algebra. And um, as, assuming that the category of lines is the Line same as modules for that vertex algebra, 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 which is what you would expect for a sufficiently rich boundary condition. Um, and then, we take that vertex algebra, show that it's prove that it's dual to Fagan to Poonin, which is known to be the same as as modules for the small quantum group. I see. I'm I'm wondering if you know for the small quantum group, this this um, or, um, the, the category of representation of a small quantum group, it has this description by sort of Bizrukovnik of Finkelberg and Schechman in terms of uh, factorizable sheaves, and uh, and I'm wondering if I mean, yeah. I have some feeling that it, this, it should be relevant for what you're doing, but I, uh, yeah. I have I have exactly the same feeling, um, and I, I don't understand that work well enough. But they like that that story also gives derived like in principle should give derived spaces of conformal blocks. Um, yes. For, uh, for for these, it, these even in high algebras. genus, it, 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 exactly, yeah. Um, so, so I, I think that should be very highly relevant for for all of this. Um, I guess I also think that Gates Gates Gray has been been doing along the same lines.
Okay, yeah, maybe yeah. One, one other small question. You mentioned turn Simon theory for supergroups. Uh, I mean, did you mention just because it's analogous or does it play any role in what you're doing? Um, there, there should be an analogous construction that involves quantum supergroups. Um, and like as like as as you know in this world of like forty young mills with different boundary conditions and interfaces, one can engineer things that look like supergroup Trent Simons as well. Um, and so there there should be generalizations of this that involve supergroups. Um, and and part of the supergroup story is also like an underived version of the supergroup story has been discussed, um, and it's. Like Rosansky and Soler wrote wrote that Trent Simons theory down, and uh, I guess in the simplest case for GL one one, and uh, and started talking about what GL one one WCW should look like, and found non semi simple categories. Um, I think if one approaches this from the supersymmetric side, one would end up with the derived category of, of everything in sight. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I think the supergroup story is very close to this. Okay, I think we can uh, okay, thank thanks. Uh, Tudor. Yeah, we can thank Tudor again.